Harvey Gorman. Yeah! And Vicki Lawrence. Yeah! And Lyle Wagoner. And two of the funniest people in the whole wide world, Tim Conway and Martha Ray. showed up, so we can all go home. <laughs> can we turn up the lights so we can talk to you before we get started? you have any questions you want to ask? Yes. Who's your favorite actor? My favorite actor is, um, well, I've got three or four, but I think my very favorite in the whole world is James Stewart. And uh, we're going to... I just met him, really, for the first time last uh, spring on the Joey Bishop show. And I, bleh, I was dying because I have loved this man all my life. And he was so sweet, and I acted like a real idiot when I met him. You know, I couldn't talk, and I, my hands were all wet and sweaty and everything. And he said, well, I'll be glad to come on your show. And I died. I, just, I am so excited. And he will. He will be on our show sometime this year. Yes? Yeah, my friend would like to know what Harvey's doing after the show. What's Harvey doing after the show? I don't know. Harvey, what are you doing after the show? <laughs> Maybe he'll come out and tell you. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite football team? My favorite football team? Uh, let me think now. I think the Mets. <laughs> Good, huh? Yeah. Who's your favorite male comedian? Who's my favorite male comedian? Oh, that's very tough. I've got quite a few, and I think two of them are on our show tonight. So don't go away. We'll be right back. From Television City in Hollywood. <laughs> The Carol Burnett Show. And here in another of his nutty characterizations, this time as an old, old auto mechanic, is Mr. Tim Conway. <laughs> Uh, this is quite an afternoon, racing fans. Speed Snyder has led this 500-mile sports car race all the way. There's also a human interest story here. Pop Collins, a great race car driver in his day, is working as part of the pit crew for Speed Snyder. And with Speed leading by five laps with only one lap to go, it looks like sure victory for the Snyder-Collins combination. Now let's get back to the... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Speed Snyder's pulling in for a pit stop. He's got to get in and get out in a hurry to win this one. We'll keep our eye on number 38, Speed Snyder, pulling in for a pit stop. Hey, Pop! Thank <laughs> you. 
Hi, Pop. Where's the rest of the pit crew? Well, they already went down to the winner's circle. The winner's circle? I haven't won the race yet. I still got one lap to go. Oh, no. <laughs> Reed Snyder now leads by only four laps. Did you hear? Pop, you've got to help me. You've got to help me. I can't leave the car. I'll be disqualified. Oh, I'll, I'll help. Where are you going? I'll run down and get the guys. <laughs> Pop! There's no time for that. All I need is oil. Well, right, I'll get it and I'll have you out faster than... <laughs> but it's important for you to get back on the track because every second you lose here in the pit means that you're losing miles out on the... On the track. Get going, will you? Come on, I'll get going. Come on. Snyder's lead has now been cut to three laps. Three. Hurry, hurry, Pop. All right, all right. Oh, pop that lid. like that, it, it sends a chill down my spine. <laughs> and my leg. Forget the oil, will you? I gotta get back on the track. Hey, right, I'll, I'll get out of here. I'm on an oil slick. Will you get out of the way? Uh, uh. For the winner, number 18, Johnny Wright. Now look what happened to you. I lost the race. Well, that's the trouble. You spend too much time in the pit. <laughs>
sweetheart, don't you worry, precious mumsy is just ta chasing away all those nasty germs. That's right, darling. Now you just concentrate on your educational mobile while mumsy reads Dr. Spock. <laughs> You rotten kids Play in the park while your old lady takes a load off her feet Now, Irving You just lie right there And play with your little pacifier Or your mother has hers <laughs> Oh, where are my manners? Would you like a slug? No, thanks. <laughs> watch it, watch it. Watch it, baby, you're cutting my beer. <laughs> Is that your kid? Yes. You married? <laughs> I beg your pardon. What kind of a person do you think I am? Look, lady, this is Central Park. For all I know, you could be a cop in drag. <laughs> <laughs> you see, in drag, you start... <laughs> all right. <laughs> Harvey! Harvey, put down that squirrel! You don't know where it's been. <laughs> uh, what are you reading, kiddo? One of those dirty novels? <laughs> this happens to be Dr. Spock. Dr. Spock. <laughs> I must have missed that one. <laughs> Benny. Benny, get your brother out of the trash can! It's pickup day! <laughs> you dumb yo-yos! How many dumb yo yo uh, How many children do you have? Eleven. How many kids do you have? Just one. Yeah. Well, that's all we wanted. But then the TV set broke down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Millie. What's yours? I happen to be Mrs. Spencer Applegate, the second. Well, Marjita. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Harry Lafferty, the fourth. See, Harry was married three times before. <laughs> three times before. I hurt you, honey? <laughs> Watch it, kid. This is a hold-up. <laughs> what are you doing? I happen to be turning the baby. If you don't turn them over every 15 minutes, they'll get a flat head. <laughs> now you tell me. No wonder my kids look like Fearless Fosdick. <laughs> you little devil, you little bitch. President of the United States. Well, now, ain't that a coincidence? My Irving is a future vice president. Really? How can you tell? 
He's always got his foot in his mouth. <laughs> I was uh, wondering if uh, either one of you ladies could uh, spare a little change. I ain't eat all week, and uh, the health ain't been too good, so... <laughs> oh, please, please, to... please, please, I can't stand sad stories. Please, I, I'm sorry, dear man. I... Oh, just... oh. Look, here, here, here's five dollars. Oh. Will you please go away? Leave oh. us alone. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes you do, and then, you know... Oh. <laughs> That's absolutely ridiculous. I must have heard that story at least a dozen times before. So have I. He's my husband. <laughs> All right, let's go, kids. Daddy's taking us out to dig in. Stay tuned now for the second half of the Carol Burnett Show, following station identification. Once upon a time, in a faraway country, there lived a beautiful young princess named Cecily. This is the tale of her star-crossed love affair with Harold of Dorton, the Virgin Prince. <laughs> Violet, where is Princess Cecily? She's expected in a moment, Prime Minister. Oh. Then out. Wish to speak to her in private. Out immediately or it's off with your head. You may be off with your head anyway. Never cared much for your work. <laughs> her, her Royal Majesty, Princess Cecily. Hello, dirty old man. <laughs> oh, hello, Fopwell. How are you today? <gasps> your Majesty. I love it when you do that. Can I do it again? No. Your Majesty. <laughs> your Majesty, may I say you look radiant? Yes, you may. And may I say that your dress is exquisite? Mm, you may. And your hairdo is very attractive. No, oh, you didn't say may I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm getting sleepy again. Oh, Fopwell, what am I... <laughs> your Highness, oh, your Highness. No. This sleeping sickness is just getting worse. Well, it's not your fault, Highness. It's been the curse of the royal family for generations. Yes, I know. 500 years of ruling and snoring, I... <laughs> now, Highness, oh, Princess Cecily! Easy, Fopwell. Princess Cecily, yes. you know the legend, Highness. Yes. A kiss from the right man would awaken one more gently. Oh, if only I could find such a man. I would marry him, and he would be beside me always. On the throne? There, too. <laughs> Princess Cecily. <laughs> I would like to be that man. You, Fopwell? <laughs> Princess Cecily! Princess Cecily! Hmm? Princess Cecily! You need a husband. After all, you will be soon ruling the kingdom. Yes, I know, but as a matter of fact, uh, a suitor is arriving today. The young ruler of Dorton, Prince Harold. Harold of Dorton? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met him? <laughs> no, but somehow... I feel he will be Prince Wright. Well. <laughs> the Prince has arrived, Your Majesty. Very well. Show him in, Lackey. <laughs> no, I do hope he's tall and handsome. Hello. I'm Harold of Jordan, better known as the Virgin Prince. <laughs> Pity. Yes. Oh, well, you might. Your Highness. Come in.
What despicable manners, Harold. Pay your respects to Her Majesty. Yes. <laughs> You're not supposed to curtsy. You're supposed to bow. Well, I get dizzy when I bend over. <laughs> Meeting you, Harold, but I must be perfectly honest. I had hoped for someone more swashbuckling. I swash. Man is supposed to be the answer to your dreams. <laughs> ha! Ha ha, I laugh. A pox on you, sir. A pox on your pox. A pox on your veritable pox, sir. A pox on your pox on your pox. A pox on your pox. Really, gentlemen, this has gone far enough. Now, hide it. Oh, did I make a proclamation? No, you just fell asleep. Oh. Oh, well, why don't you leave and return in five minutes? Very well, Your Highness. Mm. And then perhaps uh, Harold of Dorton will uh, indulge me in a bit of sword play? <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> Observe. <laughs> you missed. Oh, yeah? Not bad. Observe. Your <laughs> Majesty. I, uh, I have a strange confession to make to you. You see, there's a royal curse in my royal family. Oh, strange. There's one in ours, too. <laughs> well, our curse is sleeping sickness. What's your curse? Well, it said that many years ago, the wicked witch of Dorton cast a spell on us. And sometimes, we turn into a rabbit. <laughs> into a frog. Oh, oh, you poor thing. If there's anything worse than a virgin prince, it's a virgin frog. Oh. <laughs> you agree it. Well, promise me one thing, Harold. Should I fall asleep, would you give me your word that you'll try and experiment and you'll, you'll kiss me? On my ribbit. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. And then perhaps one day. <laughs> oh. You've brought happiness to my heart and a warp to my cheek. <laughs> Let us sit on the throne and discuss our future. I'm there, my dear. <laughs> Permanent. No, not really. It kind of. Uh oh. What's the matter? Uh, I think I see a fly. Dinner time. Excuse. Good catch, Harold. Thank you. <laughs> they taste rather good when I'm a frog, but rather icky when I'm not. <laughs> You would like a glass of wine to wash it down. Oh, yes. One quite so. Oh, uh, I'm not quite sure what goes with flies. Is it quite red? It's a ribbit. Oh, white it is. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but well, I'm glad you're here. You shall be the first to know that Prince Harold and I are to be married. Oh, no, you're not. If I can't have you, nobody can. 
Prepare to defend yourself. Oh, goody, goody, a duel. How exciting. <laughs> I fear you not. Ribbit. <laughs> ah, you virgin swine! You're on my ribbit. <laughs> you <Yota. laughs> Die! Ah. kill a defenseless man, would you? Of course not. Make no sudden move. Oh, the roast is done. <laughs> You're a gentleman and a klutz. <laughs> Kill him. Well, time for another kiss. Oh, I am sorry. If you're sorry, why don't you take it out? Yes. Oh. 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 Certainly, you're dying. You had to wake me up to tell me that. Truly, I am Ce sorry, Cecily. Oh, it wasn't your fault. Of course you do. Well, don't worry. I shall run and get help. I'll be back in a moment. Everybody stay put. <laughs> oh. I'm down a quart. for both of us. Oh, and we could have had such beautiful children. <laughs> Ribbit. <laughs> or tadpoles. Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, The Carol Burnett Show proudly presents another of our tributes to Hollywood's movie makers. Tonight, we salute one of the oldest and most illustrious studios in the film industry, 20th Century Fox. <laughs> 20th Century Fox has made some of Hollywood's biggest and most expensive extravaganzas, such as the soon-to-be-released Hello, Dolly, The Robe, The Sound of Music, and that delightful movie about the man who talked to the animals, Dr. Doolittle. Hello, lion. Hello, tiger. Hello, monkey. Hello, alligator. Hello, giraffe. Hello, elephant. Hello, little lion. Hello, doctors. Goodbye, lion. Goodbye, tiger. <laughs> One of the most successful pictures to come from Fox was a science fiction movie entitled The Fly. On this movie, a scientist conducting an experiment accidentally transforms himself into a common, everyday house fly. Now, this, of course, was very disturbing, not only to the scientist, but also his wife. Oh, Charles, Charles, we have no choice. We have to do everything we can to adjust to this terrible tragedy. Charles, where are you going? Charles, will you come back here? How can I talk to you if you keep pacing the ceiling? <laughs> 
Until we figure out how to transform you back into a human being, we're just going to have to... data in this book, and I'm going to take it to the Nobel Prize Committee. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I've just been assigned to this lab. I'm Dr. Stunning. I'm Mrs. Lorimer. Oh, then you're married. No, I'm a widow. <laughs> Back in the 1930s and 40s, 20th Century Fox made a long string of pictures based on the adventures of the famous Oriental detective Charlie Chan and his number one son. They solved many a baffling murder case. Don't worry, Janice. The mystery surrounding your husband's death will soon be solved. I've sent for the famous Oriental detective Charlie Chan. That could be him now. Good evening. Everybody here, suspect. That's telling them, Pop. <laughs> Nobody leave room, please. Ah, the way to go, Pop. <laughs> Ancestors have old saying, son with big mouth soon have fat lip. <laughs> now, first question. Where is corpse? Oh. <laughs> you just stepped over him, Pop. Very observant, number one son. I am, Pop. Don't you worry. Attaboy, Pop. I'm here, Pop. Don't you worry, Pop. One more Pop. I Pop you. <laughs> oh, let's have a look at victim now. Uh-huh. Have first theory. Knife in back. Could be clue. Uh-huh. Note on knife. Could be clue, too. Uh-huh. What does it say, Pop? The winner in Hollywood is... Aha! Aha, what, Pop? Murder in show business. Aha! Now, where wife of victim? I am his wife. Mm -hmm. Obviously, crime of passion. <laughs> uh, shall I frisk her, Pop? No, I think that not necessary. Obviously, not hiding anything. <laughs> Now, you, only person close to victim when he die, you have motive because you inherit money. You also left-handed, knife left-handed. Your fingerprints on knife. Six people see you commit crime. I didn't do it. I believe you. <laughs> I don't think she's innocent, Pop. Pop, hope not. Oh. <clears throat> Where are you when crime committed? I was in my husband's arms. Lucky stiff. Well, now, we reenact crime. Put out lights. Oh, the lights weren't out when the crime was committed, Pop. <clears throat> They'd be out during this crime. <laughs> Put out lights. Well, Pop? with us. She our murderer? No, she your new mother. <laughs>
Janice was played by Inga Nielsen. 